we believe in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He's our Lord. He's our Savior. He's our provider. He is our everything. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Amen. God is good. We're going to see today what the Lord has for us. Amen. Flesh cannot glorify God. That's what the Spirit has been saying. I just want to convey it to you that flesh cannot glorify God. Amen. We as a believer are lives to glorify God. Amen. That's our life. That's what we live for. To glorify our Lord Jesus. Amen. If we glorify Jesus, we glorify in the Father. But he's saying, the Holy Spirit is saying, flesh cannot glorify God. Flesh cannot glorify God. You hear that? We have a scripture that tells us plainly, amen, about this. Let's go to Galatians chapter chapter 5, amen. Let's read verse 16 to 18, Galatians. I say then, walk in the Spirit, amen. And here, walk in the Spirit, it's talking about the new nature, amen. And you shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh, amen. Flesh cannot glorify God. And the scripture is telling us, walk in the spirit, walk in the new nature. Amen. Hallelujah. For the flesh, that's 17, for the flesh loves against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. Amen. So that you do not do the things that you wish. <laughs> As a fire. And the new nature with the old nature that we call the flesh. Amen? They're contrary. They're not in agreement. <laughs> Amen? Verse 18. But if you are led by the spirit, by the new nature. The new nature. Remember, the new nature, a born again spirit, is the one to are capable to listen from God. Amen? Hallelujah. So that you do not do the things that you wish. Hmm. Amen. The spirit and the flesh are diametrical opposed to one another. They don't work together. They don't work together. As evidence, as evidence by their words and fruit. Then we know the fruit. When the person walking in the spirit and when they walking in the flesh. Okay? They are the fruit. If you continue reading. In this chapter, you will find out what is the fruit of the person or the person that they left by the Spirit or walking in the new nature and live by the Spirit of the Lord and walking in the new nature. You see the fruit and the fruit of the person is in the flesh. Okay? We know. Amen? How we glorify God. I said, flesh cannot glorify God. The only person that has the power to glorify God is the person that born again the believer. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, the ability, the power, because that power comes from God, comes from the new nature. Amen. Hallelujah. But you have to be led by the Spirit, glorifying God. How we glorify God? Obedience glorify God. The new nature, the new man, glorify God through obedience. Through obedience. Let's go to Romans 7. Let's play more about what we're talking about today. Romans 7. Romans 7. Let's look at verse 5. For when we were in the flesh, talking about the past, right? The sinful passions which were aroused by the law were our world and our members to bear fruit to death. For when we were in the flesh, look, talking in the past, okay? When you and me don't have Christ in our life, we didn't have Christ in the life. So we go through every passion that was in our flesh. Okay? For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death. Okay? For we were, that means lie without Christ. Amen. 
the person do whatever the flesh wants. That's what happened. The person that's in the flesh, they're not born again what they do, whatever they want, whatever they wish. They don't glorify God. They glorify self. Amen. That's what we're talking in the past. They believe it. They believe it. Have the capacity to walk in the flesh too, but have the capacity to glorify God with their life or with his life, the believer. Okay? So that's what I come choice. Because God already empowered us as believers to walk in the spirit because we have the new nature. And because we have the new nature, we have the power, the strength to glorify God. The flesh cannot glorify God. Only the man and the woman, they are in the spirit. They are born again. But the believer had to choose. Because they have the same capacity to, to disobey. The Lord is reminding us, flesh cannot glorify God. If we're going to walk in the flesh, we cannot glorify God. Amen? The word of God says, if you are in the spirit, walk in it. If you are in the spirit, you, you say you born again, walk in the spirit. Live as one. Live your life to glorify God. That's what he's saying. If you are in the spirit, walk in it. Live in it. Glorify the Lord with your life. Amen. Let's go to the next verse in Romans 7. But now, that the answer, but now we have been delivered. We have been set free. Amen. From the law. The law don't send nobody free. The law, what is the people that wasn't the, uh, the word in the law, the law was just bringing to them what it was wrong. But the Lord didn't bring deliverance to people. Deliverance to us came through Jesus Christ. Okay? Amen? But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by. What we were held by? By sin. So that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Okay. Remember, in the Old Testament, the people had to follow the letters. Don't do this, don't do that. They couldn't follow. Okay. But now, the commitments of God be written in our hearts. We have new nature. We have been born again. Amen. We... We're not whole by the old nature. We're not, we haven't been whole any longer by the sinful nature. We have been set free. Amen? We have to become a renewal in the mind. Too. We have to embrace the new nature. Okay? We have to embrace the new nature. We have been set free. We have to understand that. We have been set free. Amen? We have been set free. Who the son said free is free indeed. Okay? Are you free? We are free to glorify God. Amen? God give it that new nation. And we have to walk in it. Hallelujah. Freedom from the Lord. Freedom from the Lord does not mean license to sin. We are free. That's not license to sin. What is sin? Disobedient. When we are disobedient, we are not glorifying God. We are living we allow the flesh to detain our life. When our life has to, to be led by the new nature and by the spirit of the living God. We are a new creature. Amen. We know. You've been set free. But we're going to come back to what we were held before. We are free. Being free. Many people say, I am free, I am free. But they live like a slave. A life of sin, a life of the old nature. I don't see freedom in that. I'm free to glorify God with my life. I'm free to serve God. Amen. You are not free, or my freedom that come from God to Jesus Christ, having given me license to sin. Now I'm, I'm servant to God and servant to righteousness. I'm servant to the Lord. A bond servant. That means free. The free will. 
to glorify God in the newness of the new of the new covenant. The Holy Spirit gives power to obey God. Remember that. The Holy Spirit empowers us. The, the Holy Spirit empowers our, our new nature to obey God and glorify God. Amen. Now I was meditating and, and heard the Spirit of the Lord saying, Do you think when I told someone to obey me and, and this or and that, I leave them alone to do it? Or I empower them to do it? You see, when God tell us to do something, he already empowered us to do what he said to do. You know, what is what required from us to get close to him? We are the new nature. Our communion with God, our fellowship with God, make us stronger and make us to know him more. Amen? It was love. God said love. And people are still debating Oh, nobody can love. You know, I think that's a wrong answer. Is God telling all oh, love is empowering us to love? God never is not is going to tell us to do something. They're not going to empower us to do it. Amen. Let's see what Jesus say about the flesh. Amen. Oh, well, Jesus has something to say. <laughs> and you better listen what he had to say. Let's see what Jesus say about the flesh. Let's go to John. Chapter 6. Amen. John 6. Amen. So let's go to verse 63. It is the Spirit who gives life. Are you listening? The flesh profits nothing. Are you listening? The flesh profits nothing. Amen. The Spirit gives life. The flesh profits nothing. You see, that's why... <laughs> Flesh cannot glorify God, only the Spirit. That's what Jesus had to say about the flesh. As believers, we have the new nature, and we have the Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit empowers us to obey God, to glorify God. We hear from God. Amen. Hallelujah. Every day is opportunity to glorify God. Amen. It doesn't matter what situation you're going through. That is a right opportunity to glorify God. The flesh don't want, your emotions don't want, but the spirit is ready. Flesh cannot glorify God, for you have the spirit of the living God. You have the spirit of God. You can, in the mirror you should tell you, you can't glorify God. Yes. Amen. We can do it. We can do it. This new man has to arise. You have to come beyond the veil of flesh and glorify God. The new man had to arise in the midst of a struggle and glorify God. Amen? And glorify God. We have to glorify God with our life. The new man can do that. Glorify God. God has empowered us to say, Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That the flesh don't profit nothing. Matthew 5. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify you, Father, in heaven. What is it? Let your life, what life? Your new life. Your life that comes from above. Your new man. That life that you receive from Christ. It's a letter child. Amen. You see, and look what he said. The man see and glorify your father that is in heaven. Amen. Our life glorify God. Our lives of obedience Glorify God and others glorify God too. Because a life of obedience is glorifying God. You see? It's not about, I don't care. It's my life. No, your life belongs to, to God. Remember, you have been bought with a price. You have been set free. You have been set free though not to live your own life. 
or you live your life as you own, but it belongs to Christ. And your life to glorify Christ, the you glorifying God with your life. Amen? A simple as that. Let your light shine before men. Hallelujah. And we have the light of what? Of Christ. Who light we have? The light of Christ. And that's light. The new man. The spirit of the man, of the man. And the candle of the Lord. You see? That light. You are. That light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Why he was here. And then he said to we are the light of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. You are the light of the world. He said right here in, in Matthew 5, 14. You are the light of the world. Amen. Our life glorify God. And ask you. Amen. A certain thing that we have to do, right? To live that kind of life of glorifying God. I know worship help. Prayer help. But you pray and pray and watch and watch. You don't wait. You see, it's time for obedience. Man, prayer, watch, obedience. For Corinthians. Before we go to for Corinthians, you go there. When we receive the lives that come from God to the born again experience, it's our responsibility to let the light shine. You see? What Jesus said here, let your life shine. That's our responsibility. We have to meditate, think about this. A life that we live in is glorifying God. The light of Christ is shining through us. We have to think about this. It's important. The Lord said, I'm looking for a man. When he, took, when he said looking for a man, he's talking about a woman too. They can find in us. That man, that woman, they're looking for to shine. You know, we always looking for the, the best scenario, the best situations. We're not going to find it. We have to step out and allow that new man to arise. And God can do his will and his purpose through us. That he be glorified through our life. Because him has to be glorified through our life. Self of the flesh. And self cannot glorify God. The self has to get out of the way that God must be glorified in our life. Amen. Are you in Corinthians? As I said, Corinthians chapter 6. Amen. Glory. Let's read 19 and 20. For Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you now. Are you listening what he's saying? Are you? I think. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Where is the Holy Spirit? Amen. And you are the temple of God, right? Hmm. Is whom you are from God. And you are not you own. That's important. Listen to this. Hmm. Hallelujah. Or do you not know that your, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? The temple of the Holy Spirit. The temple of God. Who is in you. Whom you have from God. And you are not your own. Your own. You not belong to yourself. That's what he's saying. You not belong to yourself. Amen. You not belong to yourself. You belong to God. Amen. You not belong to yourself. You see that new life that God gave you. You belong to Him. To serve Him. To live for Him. He set you free. To be free to serve Him. He said here. You are not you own. Hmm. We have to think about this. We not belong to ourselves. You know, some people say, I belong to you, God, but they do what they wish or what the flesh want to because the spirit is willing to obey. The spirit always 
willing at the flesh. <laughs> you know, that attitude that come from the new man, from the old man. The Bible said that the, the old man is corrupt. That means do whatever they want. No nice thing. The things that the old man do, do not glorify God. Verse 20, for you were both at a price. Huh. Therefore, because that, you see, because you have been bought with a price, glorify, you see, glorify God in your body. <laughs> you see, in your body. You have been bought with a price, therefore, glorify God with your body. Hmm. So that means you cannot say, my life is not your life now. You belong to someone. You belong to Christ. Christ owned you. He bought you with blood. Amen. Therefore, glorify God in your body, in your spirit, body and spirit, which are God's. Our spirit belongs to God, our body too, even our body. <laughs> we have to mature more and more in the new nature. More we mature, what happened? The deal of the flesh winding down, wind down, right? But we have to mature in that new nature. The new nature have to mature. We have to learn to live in the new nature. Man, to be to this becomes a life and God that we can glorify not only in the spirit God, our body too. And I'm not talking about singing a song, I'm talking about be obedience. What God is telling you, there come a time that your flesh is not leading you, your spirit is leading you, that your flesh is only to carry you wherever God wants to take you, and your flesh to assist you to obey God. And whatever God wants you to obey. Amen. Believers are the temple of God. Because the Holy Spirit dwells in them. The believers have been bought by the blood of Jesus. They should glorify Him. Should. You see. Amen. Many people say, I'm a, I'm a woman of the Spirit. I'm a man of the Spirit. I don't know what they're talking about because I don't see it. That's what he said. You in the Spirit? Walk in the Spirit. And not fulfill the loss of the flesh. And it tell us what are worth are those things, some of the things. Amen. Glorify God. You know, the flesh always made a mess. <laughs> we have to allow the new nature lead us by the Spirit of the Living God. That we can glorify our Heavenly Father with our life. This is the best time. You know, the Holy Spirit told me long time ago. This is the time. This is the hour. To walk in the spirit, to live in the spirit. This is time. Whenever we is scared and talking, oh, how dark it is, this is our best time to live, to glorify God. Hmm. Hallelujah. What are we waiting for? Do we have the best circumstances of our life to glorify God? I don't think so that's going to happen. Always going to be something. I think nobody wants in the life, no one. One persecution, no one, one bad thing that happened to the life, no one. Well, we live in this earth. We're not looking for, we don't want those things. We, we want good things for our life. But if we're waiting for the, the old circumstances to be good in our life, how, when we going to glorify God? When? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. In Galatians 5, 25. I've been saying that, but let's go there. I've been, if we live in the Spirit, if we live in the Spirit, let's also walk in the Spirit. You see? Hmm. And look at how, how the chapter finish. <laughs> finish. Let's all not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. You see how they feel because those things they are they are nothing of the spirit. They are things of the flesh, right? Considered prideful, arrogant. Because they're provoking one another, envying, envying one another. Hmm. Amen. This is the time that the new man glorify God. Hallelujah. Jesus is example. Jesus always are our example. Jesus came to this earth to what? 
to glorify God. He didn't come to glorify himself. And we can see that in Hebrews, Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5, 5. So also Christ did not glorify himself. Okay? Christ, our Lord, did not, did not glorify himself to become high priest. But it was who said to him, You are my son, today have begotten you. Okay, look, who glorified Jesus? The Father. Why? Because he was obedient. Okay, amen? After he was obedient, then he was glorified for the Father. He didn't come to glorify himself. His obedience glorified the Father. What Jesus did when he went to the cross, he didn't went to the cross for himself. He did it for the Father, to glorify the Father. Because that was the will of the Father. You go to some place to be killed for yourself, to people remember you as a martyr. That's not for the glory of God. People do crazy things. We, we see in the news. But Jesus went and did the will of the Father. To glorify the Father with his obedience. You know, to glorify the Father sometimes brings pain to your life. But you do it because obedience. You want to glorify him. Flesh don't want pain. Flesh like to be comfortable. Flesh like to be easy. Flesh love pleasure. That's why flesh cannot glorify God. Amen. Jesus did not glorify himself. Glorify the Father always. Every action when he walked in this earth was to glorify the Father. You see, when he healed people, it was for the glory of the Father. And we live for his glory. We have the new nature. Amen? We are born again, right? We have the Spirit of the living God. The Spirit of the living God living in us, leading us. We live in the Spirit, and we walk in the Spirit, right? You see, that's why it just don't give us new nature. But he gives us the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us. Always the Holy Spirit leading us to glorify the Father, to glorify Jesus. He never going to do something, tell you something contrary to glorify Jesus. If we do something contrary to that, we know it's the flesh or something else. No. Lots of things help us, and we have to do those things. One of the, the things that help us a lot is worship. You know, that communion with God, communion to prayer, you even to fast sometimes too. All those things help us. Amen? Fair Peter. Fair Peter 4, 16. <laughs> Nobody want to hear about suffering. <laughs> oh, yet, if anyone suffered as a Christian, as a Christian, oh, Christian suffer, yes. Many ways. Uh, hallelujah. Yet, if anyone suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Amen. But let him glorify God in this matter. Oh, in suffering too? Yes. <laughs> Have to glorify God in suffering too? Oh, yes. As Christians, God's suffering for ser Christ are to glorify Him. That's what He said. As Christian, that means serving God, doing His will, walking with Him, you're going to suffer too. You're not talking about suffering because you doing the loss of the flesh. He's talking about Christian. When He's talking about Christian, he's saying, as believer, the one they are doing the will of God. But you're suffering in this. Glorify Him. Stop whining. Glorify Him in this matter. Whatever it is. Glorify Him. The flesh don't want glorified because the flesh don't want pressure. But pressure sometimes is good. Because pressure, like, like, you see, orange, you pressure the orange, what comes? The juice. You know, whatever you say in you is going to come out. Pressure. Pressure brings the best of all, the worst of us. Let's see what pressure comes out from you. The first thing that comes out of you, that's why you've been full. 
That's pressure. But you know, if that is the bad thing that come out out of your pressure, hey, good, that's good too. Because going away and then the good things has come out too. Pressure is good sometimes. If you don't want it, I don't want it. The pressure, pressure is good for us. I don't want it. But so time has to come, and when the pressures come to our life, it's to glorify God, but you know, it's something that is not of God in my life, it's when it comes out. And it's good too, because then the Lord can deal with it. I know it now. And we deal with that thing too. The I can, my life can be for the glory of God. The life they are living now be for the glory of God. Then whatever it is, then it just comes out, let it come out. <laughs> Amen? Pressure. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, if anyone suffered as a Christian, let him not be our change. You see, if you suffer because Christ don't, don't be our change or that. You suffer for him. But one thing we have to do, but let him glorify God in this matter. That you pressure, you pressure that you have um, experienced lately. Yes, for the glory of God. Yes, because you serve in God. Glorify Him. Remember, can all joy. Can all your joy, right? Can all your joy. When you go through what? Good time? <laughs> no. Diverse trials and temptations. Can all of joy. Can all of joy. Amen. That's what he's saying here, Peter, too. Same thing. Did you suffer? Glorify God in this matter. Pressure. You know, pressure. They bring the best of all or the bad of us. <laughs> Whatever we, we, we are full. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You know. And we're going to say, oh, that's why we were full. When that thing comes out, you're going to say, oh, I didn't know that, that was there. The pressure just brought out what was inside. That was the pressure. The pressure wasn't the problem. <laughs> because that thing came from inside. The pressure was from outside. But pressure brought out what I, whatever was inside. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the Lord said, okay, my, my son, my daughter, we need to work more. The Holy Spirit said, yeah, yeah. I've been telling that we need to work at this. We work it there. Hey, let's glorify God this. <laughs> let's glorify God this. It is what it is. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And look at what he said, the fruit of the Spirit, you see? And the flesh has its fruit too. But pressure, we bring those things out. Amen? Where is in you? Do we glorify God or else? Mm. Pressure. Pressure. Pressure is like, like a measure thing of thermometer that allows us to know what is inside us. See? Pressure or circumstances allow us to know how our faith in Christ is, how much faith we have in God, how much we are willing to glorify God with our life. Pressure do those things. Hallelujah. We ought to glorify God. Remember, don't forget this scripture, 1 Peter 4, 16. If anyone suffered as a Christian, let him not be a change, but let him glorify God in this matter. Whatever you suffer as Christian, because you choose to serve him and follow him and glorify him with your life, you have your suffering in any area of your life, to not be a change, but give glory to him. Glorify his name. The grace of God is upon you. Receive it, walk in it, and glorify your Father. 
that is in heaven. Amen.